Welcome everyone. Great to great to see you all, and great to good to be be back together again. Just want to welcome welcome everyone, and uh, maybe just particularly mention those who are joining us from outside of our, um, our regular area, the DC metropolitan area, the DC Maryland Virginia. So we have uh, Daphne from San Diego, welcome, and Sean from Toronto, and Kerry Mera from New Jersey, welcome back, and um, Susan from Pittsburgh, Go Steelers, Penguins, and whatever. And uh, let's see, Gretchen from New York City, welcome. Um, maybe others as well, but if you haven't renamed, re haven't changed your um, your name, Collins from Walnut Creek, California, good to see you. And Juliana from Irvine, good to see you, California too, welcome. Rachel from. Acton, Massachusetts. Heather from Jackson, Maine. Welcome. Good to see you. And Georgine from Vienna, Austria, representing Europe today. That's great. We uh, mainly have North America. That's great. And uh, so, and, and everyone else, all of us from uh, the, uh, our area and, and anyone anyone uh, that I, I didn't catch, so welcome. Um, I had my second shot, so I'm, uh, I'm uh, all set. I'm going to obviously be safe and do the mask and social distance and all of that till we're really on the other side, but it does feel good to, uh, to, get, uh, to get the shots and uh, Fortunately, no, no adverse reactions either. So that was, feel very grateful and blessed for that. Um, celebrating my birthday this weekend. So uh, happy to, uh, happy to celebrate, um, be, be together with, um, here um, for, our, for our session today. I hope everyone's uh, doing well, keeping well. I'm feeling that uh, there's a sense that we're moving, um, maybe moving, you know, seeing seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. To use that uh, that metaphor, that uh, maybe it won't be too long. You know, as uh, President Biden said, uh, maybe we'll be doing cookouts in the backyard, um, barbecues for July Fourth. And everyone have at least be eligible for for vaccinations by the end of by May, I think he said. So anyway, hope everyone is hope everyone's doing well, and um, glad that we have the chance to be together. Thank you for all for your wishes. The um, the theme that we'll be focusing on today is one that's uh, very dear to my heart and. Um, very core to um, uh, to our practice, both in meditation and in in daily life. It's the uh, it's the theme of acceptance, cultivating acceptance, cultivating cultivating acceptance of ourselves, and also cultivating acceptance of you know life as it's uh, as it's unfolding, and. Uh, lots to uh, lots to explore there you know people often you know feel confused about it and like oh what if what am i accepting you know am i accepting being in an abusive relationship no um are i accepting climate change is always gonna be you know be here and that's just the way it is and you know is 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 acceptance just being passive about, you know, about our situation, our personal situation or about our world situation? Um, and the answer to all of that is, is no. And I'll, I'll kind of explore some of those questions and um, 
in this theme of, uh, of acceptance today. But what we've been doing is, um, in the last few weeks or last couple of months actually, is we've been beginning with the meditation. And I think that that's a good way to begin so we can kind of settle down, we get kind of drop, drop out of our, our heads, kind of come into our bodies and into our hearts. And then I'll share a little bit about this theme for today. Um, we'll have some uh, movement that Emily will lead us in and we'll have some sharing together, thinking in breakout groups. And then we'll come back, maybe do a little more sharing in the full group. And then um, a final meditation and some announcements. So that's kind of the format of the, of the session. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll begin with a, a, with a sit, as I've said. So I invite you to Say, take some moments to, to, to settle, to arrive, of finding a posture that's relaxed and comfortable. Inviting the shoulders to relax. You can let your eyes close if that's comfortable for you. Rest the hands in the, in the lap or on the knees or thighs. <clears throat> Excuse me. So taking your seat, you think of the archetype of the Buddha sitting under the under the tree of enlightenment. Taking your seat between as it were, between heaven and earth. Letting yourself arrive and settle. Make any adjustments that you might need to make to be as comfortable and relaxed as you can be. You might connect with your breathing. Begin by just noticing how the breath is for you. You might invite it to deepen. Take a nice full deep in breath. And relaxing on the out breath, long slow out breath. Filling the lungs, filling the chest as you breathe in. Releasing, relaxing as you breathe out. Imagine you're breathing out any stresses or busyness, cares of the day. <clears throat> Notice how uh, a deeper breath can help you settle, relax the body and the mind. Breathing in, calming the body. Breathing out, calming the mind. The deeper breaths can be a resource, particularly if you're feeling tense or tight in meditation or in daily life, just to invite a deeper breath or two. Help you come home to yourself, help you settle, relax.
And whenever you're ready, you can let the breath come back to its natural rhythm. You might invite a smile to your face as a, as a way of relaxing and settling the body, the mind. It's activating the muscles around the eyes and around the mouth. You can think of something or someone who makes you feel happy or joyful. Just invite in their image there into your heart, into your mind. You might invite the smile down into your heart into your body. Let the smile be the expression of how you, how you want to meet your experience or how you choose to meet. What's here right now? See if you can meet it with the, with the attitude of a smile. Letting your attention come into the body, it's opening to what's present right now, whatever feelings you're aware of. It's inviting a, an attitude of acceptance and of kindness to what's here. Meeting your breath just as it is, with acceptance and with kindness. Whatever mood or emotions might be present right now, see if you can meet these two with, with kindness, with care. Accepting this experience, this moment, just as it is. Just saying yes to, to this moment, to this feeling, this sensation. This moment without judgment. However the mind is right now, you know, maybe busy and active, maybe lots of thoughts, or perhaps more calm, more, more settled. However it is, just meet what's here with kindness and with acceptance. welcoming the guests in Rumi's image. You know, whoever, whatever is visiting you. Can this be met with 
with care, with kindness, without judging or resisting, just accepting this, this moment as it is. And you can use the breath as, a, as an anchor for your awareness, if that's helpful. Just the sensations of breathing in, breathing out. <clears throat> the breath just as it is. In breath and out breath. and having that anchor to come back to when the mind goes off into thought, into plans or memories or daydreams, worries. Just to notice, just to accept when the breath has gone off, that it's moved into thought and then gently and kindly to incline the mind back, back to the body, back to the breath, back to this moment. <clears throat> inviting a quality of acceptance to whatever you're experiencing, whatever's present right now. Can it be held in this container of acceptance, of kindness? If something is challenging or difficult, you might see how it would be to, to say yes to this challenging or difficult emotion or bodily feeling, thought. To meet it with acceptance. This moment is like this.
in this moment be a moment of peace, a moment of acceptance. Whatever's present, can it be held in this container of, of kindness and acceptance? Is consciously creating a space in our lives to for whatever whatever's arising. To meet whatever's present with kindness, with care, with acceptance, whatever's calling for attention. And you meet it with acceptance. No part of ourselves and our experience excluded from our practice, from our kindness, from our acceptance. And if there's resistance, kind of tensing up, contraction, pushing away of anything. See if that resistance can be held with kindness and with acceptance. So this too can come and go in its own time, the feelings, the tightness, tension, but it can self-liberate, we don't have to push anything away or reject anything or repress anything, just giving, giving it all space to come, to be here, to go. <clears throat>
we finish with this um, poem by the Portuguese poet <coughs> Fernando Pessoa. Calm because I'm unknown and myself because I'm calm. I want to fill my days with wanting nothing from them. For those whom wealth touches, gold irritates the skin. For those on whom fame blows, life fogs over. On those for whom happiness is their sun, night will fall. But those who hope for nothing are glad for whatever comes. Those who hope for nothing are glad for whatever comes. So taking your time to come back and welcoming any anyone who joined us in during the meditation after we'd begun. So welcome to you all. <coughs> so some reflections on uh, today on acceptance, and um, you know, it's a, something that I you know emphasized in the in the meditation and that we we focus on and we talk about quite a lot. And I think rightly so, because it's one of the most important qualities, I think, that we can cultivate in meditation. And also as a, as a, as a quality or an attitude in our, in our daily lives. I think of it as a, it's a kind of an orientation of the spirit that's really indispensable in our practice and our lives. If we're in, if we're in a relationship of resistance to our experience, then we're actually, you know, we're in struggle with it. We're fighting with the way things are and we're not really present for our, we're not really exploring, we're not really fully even kind of living our lives, you know, to their potential, you know, because we're, we're in a, we're in a, you know, a, a contracted place, a kind of sh shrunk place. And acceptance is really a kind of an opening, a, an, it's an opening to really all aspects of our life and of life more generally. <coughs> um, so it's, a, it's really a, a, a central and an indispensable part of our practice, I think, and of our life, of an examined life. Um, but it's also a quality um, that people do get confused about. You know, people, you know, question, well, what am I accepting? And am I accepting all of the bad things? Am I saying, well, those are just the way things are? And, <clears throat> so I wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, today, share some thoughts about what I, what I believe acceptance is and what it isn't. Um, and, you know, I think, I think acceptance in meditation really is a kind of a microcosm for acceptance in our, in our, in our lives more broadly because what's coming up in meditation, all of the ways that we hold on or push away experiences or we suppress things or we space out, they're really the same as what we do in, in our lives, maybe under different conditions in our lives with more 
we're more in a kind of a relational field when we're, we're when we're in our, our daily lives we're with our friends or our family members or our people we work with or community etc but it's still really the same the same practice and meditation can be um, um, <clears throat> as in other areas can be a really a, a kind of a labor laboratory for, for to help us kind of explore our experience and work with it you know in a lab, a lab laboratory a lab if you like for for our lives you know because it's not that what arises in meditation is something in, entirely separate from our lives maybe in certain areas of you know deep practice it can be you know different from what we're doing in our lives but most of what's arising is you know this body heart and mind doing its thing, doing its thing in meditation or doing its thing in, in life. So when we practice, when we, when we practice, when we cultivate acceptance in meditation, we're really inviting ourselves to meet our experience with an open heart, to allow what's here to be here, to come and to go in its own time. So whether it's this feeling of sadness that comes up when I think about something that's happened or, you know, something going on in the world, or maybe it's a worried, anxious thought about, you know, about what might happen, or maybe it's a discomfort feeling of pain or discomfort in the back or whatever, um, or maybe it's a joyful feeling, a peaceful, calm feeling or a joyful feeling. Whatever it is, we're inviting that same quality. We're inviting the quality of acceptance, no more and no less so for the pleasant as for the unpleasant or for the neutral. It's really that same quality of, of wholeheartedness, you know, of, you know, of, as, Rumi, um, as Rumi speaks about, of welcoming the guests. Even if there are a crowd of sorrows who sweep your house empty of its furniture, Still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. So, you know, that, that, that image, that metaphor is, you know, even though I've, you know, been aware of it and talked about it for 20 plus more years, you know, it's still, it's still I find a useful one. Of kind of, okay, yeah, guests coming to visit. Can I can I say yes to this guest? You know, this feeling, this emotion, this mind state. You know, this is what's here right now. And other images and other metaphors, I think, can be really helpful too. Eckhart Tolle um, uh, speaks about the the yes to what is, the yes to what is, and. Uh, you know, there are meditations where we can cultivate the power of yes, you know, and I, I, they can be quite powerful meditations and you might be familiar with them where, where maybe you're experiencing something difficult and you, and you consciously try and push it away, you know, resist it. I don't like this. I don't want it. And notice how that feels. You know, how does it feel in the body? How does it feel in the emotions, how does it feel in the mind, and then to open and say yes to this, you know, how does it say yes to this sadness after saying no to it, you know, and how, you know, make space for it, you know, see that the sadness can be there, but it isn't everything, you know, there's space around it, there's other things happening as well. So the yes to, to what is. The um, Arjun Samedo, some of you may know him, who is a student of Arjun Chah and um, one of the, the uh, abbot of Amaravati uh, Centre just outside of London, north of London. Um, a, a wonderful teacher, um, probably in his 80s now. He, he uses the, um, the expression, um, it's like this. You know, whatever it's like this. Oh, sadness, it's like this. Um, discomfort, pain, it's like this. You know, joy, it's like this. You know, so whatever it is, it's just, <clears throat> it is what it is. You know, it's like this. It's the way things are right now. So it's a kind of, uh, 
it's cultivating that, <coughs> excuse me, cultivating that, um, that quality of acceptance, of just saying yes to, to, to what is, it's like this. Tara Brock is probably most of you familiar with this, uh, um, speaks of radical acceptance, you know, which I think is a, is a good expression of, of acceptance, radical meaning deep rooted, going to the roots. So our acceptance of our experience needs to be, needs to be radical. You know, you might have experienced in meditation trying to bring acceptance to your experience. And you say to yourself, yeah, okay, I, I can stay with this pain. You know, I want it to be gone though in five minutes, you know, I want, I, you know, I'll, I'll stay with it, but it, but it, as long as it leaves, you know, as long as it doesn't last forever. You know, much of the illusion, much of the suffering we get caught up in is the illusion that, um, that this pain or this, difficulty is going to last forever that it's permanent you know it's an it's it's an illusion we in some way we know it isn't but some part of ourselves we feel that you know that this is going to go on and just to recognize the impermanence of things can can help us hold our experience in a you know in a kinder wiser way and let go of things that can be can be let go of but so that in, with acceptance, we're not talking about bargaining. We're not talking about, you know, as long as it's gone within five minutes, whatever. But genuine wholehearted acceptance, you know, the kind of acceptance that says, even if it does stay forever, you know, or stay for a long time, I'm gonna stay with this. I'm gonna open to this. I'm gonna meet it with kindness. So inviting that quality of, really of open-hearted acceptance of our experience. So when we talk about acceptance, what we're talking about really is a, being in a relationship of non-resistance, non-clinging, non-judging of our experience. It's not that holding or pushing away or judging our experience, putting a kind of a, something between ourselves and our experience. It's opening fully to it. You know, as you have shared the, um, the saying from, um, from Anthony de Mello, the uh, Jesuit teacher, who spoke, uh, writer, um, who speaking more broadly about enlightenment as absolute cooperation with the inevitable. I like that expression, absolute cooperation with the inevitable. So we're, we're, in, we're co co cooperating completely with what is, you know, because we can say whatever is here right now is here. It's inevitable in the sense that it's unavoidable, you know, not inevitable in the sense that it had to be. You know, you could say it had to be based on the conditions that led up to it, it had to be, but not in the sense that sometimes we use inevitable of, you know, we couldn't have done something about it. Perhaps we could have done something about it, but we could have had to have done something about it back then, because right now it's what's here. So whatever you're feeling right now in this moment, whatever I'm feeling in this moment, is what's here right now. And that's always what we're going to be dealing with, isn't it? You know, we might wish, we might kind of wish, oh, I wish it were different. I wish I was feeling joyful right now rather than full of sadness. Well, that might be, you know, might be a nice thought, but what we're dealing with right now is the sadness. We can't wish it away, you know, and so the best, the most effective way of bringing about change in things that we do want to, to change is to meet them with acceptance. The more we can accept ourselves as we are, the more we can accept this moment as it is, the more we can change in beneficial directions. I'll say some more about that in a minute. So acceptance is, is really very much, uh, you, you can see it as a key element of 
the second of the Buddhist refuges. You know, the three refuges of taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, in awakening the first refuge. Taking refuge in the Dharma is taking refuge in the truth. It's taking refuge in the truth of life as it's unfolding. This is how things are right now. You know, we might wish for things to be different. We might wish for actions to have been taken around climate change 50 years ago, you know, so that we wouldn't be in the position place we're in right now. But right now we are where we are, you know, and that's an acceptance is really accepting the truth of that is the place from which we have to start if we're going to make change. We can't, we can't change from a place of wishing things were different or from a place of wishful thinking. Change has to come, I think, really. Um, genuine change has to come from acceptance of the truth of our experience. You know, sometimes it may involve hitting the bottom and really honestly and authentically saying, oh, yeah, this is, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a, a really painful, difficult place right now. And many people have found that has been the place from which really important change in their life has come, not for everybody, but for some, you know, and with drugs and with alcohol and, you know, recognizing the truth of, yeah, this is where I am, to be able to, from there to be able to, to, to make change. So all of these approaches that I've spoken about are, are really an inv invitation to open to our experience as it is, both in, in meditation and in life. Does this mean that what's happening is good or right? And does it mean we can't or we shouldn't change something because it's here? You know, this is a question that often comes up, you know. Am I, am I just saying that this is good that it's happening or that it's right that it's happening or that I shouldn't change what's happening. Eckhart Tolle again um, speaks to that question. He says, to be in, a, in alignment with what is, to be in alignment with what is, you could say to accept what is, means to be in a relationship of inner non-resistance with what happens. So to be in a relationship with it, of inner non-resistance with what happens, it means not to label it mentally as good or bad, but to let it be. So not to say, oh, it's bad or good that this is happening, but just to let it be. It's like this. Does this mean that you can no longer take action to bring about change in your life? He says, on the contrary, when the basis of your action is inner alignment with the present moment, your actions become empowered by the intelligence of life itself. So when the basis of your action is, is acceptance, inner alignment with the present moment, your actions then become empowered by the intelligence of life itself. You're actually cooperating with life itself by accepting, coming into alignment with how things are. So far from, um, from acceptance meaning kind of passivity or not changing anything, acceptance really is, that you could say, is the sine qua non for, for really genuine change. It's the place that aligns us with life itself and from acceptance, then real change can come. So if we open fully with acceptance to the truth of our experience of what's happening, what's here, then we're in a position to work to change what needs to be changed. <coughs> Excuse me. So as I mentioned, climate change, take climate change. When we accept the truth of climate change, this is what's happening. You know, all of the evidence 
you know, 97% or 99%, whatever the number is right now, of climate scientists around the world, hundreds of them, thousands of them saying, this is happening and this appears to be why it's happening and this is our role in it. When we accept the truth of climate change, this is happening, this is real then we can then from there we can begin to change make change so we're not saying climate change is good or that it's right that it's happening or isn't it this a great thing that it's happening we're not at all saying that but and we're also not in denial about it we're not saying oh if i look the other way it's not happening or oh it must be something it must be just something that happens every ten thousand years you know that's not what the evidence is showing. So we're neither saying it's right or denying that's, that it's happening. We're saying we're bringing acceptance to the truth of this is what, you know, everything that, you know, the, the evidence shows, this is, this is real and accepting the truth of, of that situation, of our situation. From there, we can, from this place of acceptance of truth, again, taking refuge in the Dharma, we can work to make change. And then as Tol says, we, we, we will be empowered by the intelligence of life itself. So we're not going from coming from denial. We're not coming from wishful thinking. We're coming from acceptance of, of of, uh, of the truth of, of our experience in life um, as it is. I'm just reading that from Rachel shared in the chat. She says, accepting the dead Christmas tree that's still on our patio and all the other unfinished projects and uncleaned message, and um, un <coughs> excuse me, uncleaned messes. Mama needed this subject today. I'm glad to hear that. So acceptance really is a gateway to freedom of the heart. <coughs> Another quoting Eckhart Tolle a lot today. <coughs> Excuse me. And I like this one, I like a lot. He says, what you accept fully, you go beyond. What you accept fully, you go beyond. When we accept you know, when we accept the truth of our experience or the truth of our life, we go beyond in, we go beyond it in the sense that it no longer has its hooks in us. You know, when we're when we're resisting our experience or we're holding on to things being in a certain way, we're in a place of of clinging, of craving or of aversion. And, and that's a place of suffering. That's the kind of the roots of suffering. But if we open fully to our experience, we actually go beyond it. You know, we're not, we're not controlled by it anymore. If we can open fully to our fears, recognize, feel, open to them, allow that energy, you know, to feel the energy in the body, to feel that emotion in us, to be aware of the thoughts that we have the fearful thoughts without following them, without you know going with them wherever they go, but recognizing them, acknowledging them, accepting that they're there. Then we can change our relationship to that difficult emotion. We can change our relationship to the fear. We're no longer we're no longer controlled by the fear. That's what he means when when what you accept. Fully you go beyond. <clears throat> and this is what our practice, you know, this is the promise that the practice offers. That we can come into a, a different relationship with our experience, with our life. Um, you know, I, I, I shared the, the image of um, that... Uh, T.S. Eliot uses in the um in in his four quartets and philip moffat the west coast um 
wonderful the meditation teacher in his book talks about dancing with life and it's an image I come back to a lot being in that kind of fluid relationship with our with our life rather than in in a fight with life you know I think we all know this don't we you know when we're in a struggle with our life you know of like we want things to be a certain way where we put all our energy into anxiety or worry maybe at times of anger about things, you know, about the political situation, we feel like we're in a struggle in that way. And it's not a place of ease, it's not a place of well-being. So the invitation is to keep kind of finding our way back to a much more fluid relationship with our experience, a relationship of ease where we are dancing with life. <clears throat> Carl Rogers, a psychologist, says, the curious paradox is that when I accept myself as I am, then I can change. The curious paradox is that when I accept myself as I am, then I can change. So when we resist our experience, you know, putting, looking at the other side of it, when we resist our experience, when we resist life as it is, we're in a relationship of suffer suffering. You know, we're in a relationship of contraction. Jung said, what you resist persists. And in relation to our own experience, our own emotions and mind states, traumas, if you like, every, Robert Bly says, every part of us that we don't learn to accept and love will become hostile to us. Every part of us that we don't learn to accept and love will become hostile to us. So we're inviting in this quality of acceptance to all parts of ourselves, all of our emotions, all of our mind states, all of our habits that we may you know, be, feel a lot of judgment about, can we, can we open with acceptance to, this is where things are right now, and from there, be able to make change. Through acceptance, we move towards change. This is the way we, we change our habits that, were, that aren't working for us in our, in our lives. We begin with awareness and acceptance, aware of what's here, accepting what's here. And then from there, be able to, with awareness, notice, you know, the things that trigger the habits that move us towards doing things that are unhealthy for us. And we learn to stay. We accept the feelings. We ride the waves of them. And in that way, we, we can make profound shifts in our, in our life towards greater well-being, towards greater happiness. <clears throat> I saw this for myself the other day, walking on the path near um, behind our, our, our house where I do a lot of walking. And um, I'd had uh, the, two, um, the two vaccinations and, you know, felt good about that. And, you know, we're still wearing a mask and, you know, keeping social distance, physical distance and all of that. And I saw quite a lot of people walking along the path, um, maybe more than usual with, with any, and running as well, you know, breathing out a lot, um, with, uh, without any mask on them, without any covering on their face. And I, I found myself getting into a lot of judgment about it. I, I was kind of saying to myself, look, we don't have very long to go and, and then we'll all be on the other side and we'll all be, you know, um, um, you know, we'll have herd immunity, you know, hopefully fairly soon, but let's, you know, as we've been encouraged to do, let's, let's keep going for a bit longer, you know, maybe a month, a couple of months or a few months longer. So I, f I found this, you know, I saw this judgment arising in my mind of like, I'd look at people and say, why, you know, why, why not? You know? And then I thought to myself, well, you know, if I'm in this place of, you know, judging and, and kind of like getting contracted about it, then I'm the one that's, that's suffering really. And, and so I, I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, 
I'm going to just shift my my way of responding, you know, of kind of, okay, can I just accept that this is how things are right now? I might wish things to be different. And just in making that shift, you know, it's a small thing, and we've all do these things, I think, in our lives. Um, we get caught up. Just in making that shift, it just made things a lot easier. You know, it just, you know, I don't need to, you know, I don't need to change other people's behavior. I'm not going to stop them and, you know, and give them a, a talking to, you know, they have their reasons um, for, the, for the choices, as we all do for the choices we make. And, but if I can come to acceptance about my own way I respond, then I can change my relationship to the, to the experience, you know, and it's probably going to have the same impact, you know, as, you know, probably save having uh, negative encounters with people that don't, I don't think very often get anywhere. Um, I also changed my relationship to uh, the, uh, the royal family in the UK, but I'll save that for another time. I, cho I chose to, to, um, to meet that whole thing from a place of curiosity and some compassion rather than antipathy, which is my normal relationship to the monarchy. <laughs> you know, I'm a Republican. I'm a staunch Republican, not an American Republican. I mean, from an English, uh, from a UK and, a, and an Irish standpoint, but I'll save that story for another day. Um, so just to share those um, reflections, invite you to kind of explore as, you know, obviously many of us are in an ongoing way, just being able to, to consciously bring acceptance into our meditation practice and into our life, lives. And what happens when we do that, this? Because it's all about the, you know, the, in the Pali language, see for yourself. Ehipasiko, see for yourself. What happens when you cultivate acceptance in meditation? What happens when you cultivate it in your family relationships, in your relationships with friends or work or any other areas of your life? And then from, you know, the, the insights that come from that, maybe to deepen the practice, cultivate that. So I'll leave it here, invite Emily to um, lead, lead us in some mo nice uh, mindful movement. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness listening. Accepting. That's so, such a great topic. I love it. So just take a moment to find your feet swaying from side to side, shifting weight, and then open up into the space around you, enjoying the swing of your arms, the turn, good twists, excellent. Now, bring your attention to slow it down, Focusing, allowing your body to become more still. Bring your arms alongside of you. Turn your palms up and reach for the sky, cultivating the energy of the blueness, the sun, the openness and wind, and bring all that energy into your heart. And then open to the energy of all of us together, the compassion, the kindness, acceptance again, and bring that to your heart. And then open to the abundance of the earth, gathering it and bring that acceptance to your heart. Now reach up. Grasp your left hand, left wrist in your right hand. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, tilt over to the right. Breathe. 
feeling the breath in your upper rib cage. And then come up, switch hands. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, tilt over to the left. Breathing into that right rib cage. And soften with the exhale. And then inhale up, float your arms down. And then bring them up into cactus arms to we'll rotate our shoulders. So inhale, and then drop with an exhale. Inhale up and drop, exhale. Inhale and exhale, float them down. Reach out wide and bring your hands above your knees. Inhale into a flat back. And then exhale, lower your head down, allowing your shoulders to be pulled by gravity, allowing your hands to float in the air or touching the floor, whatever you are in this moment. Take a deep breath. And exhale with a sigh. <sighs> and then bring your hands back above your knees. Press on your feet. Rolling up your spine. Hands to heart center and release to the sky. Release to the room. And to the earth. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. That was lovely as always. Thank you. And um, let's just take a couple of minutes to see if anyone would like to share anything with the full group or have a, a question. Um, thanks for sharing that, Pat. Um, <clears throat> Um, yeah, anyone who would like to uh, share or ask a question in the group, and I'm looking here. Bob, yeah, Bob, please go ahead. Yeah, just, just a quick one, Hugh. I just wanted to commend you, and I think I wrote a note uh, to you after I experienced it, but I was thinking about a guided meditation. I think you have it on Insight Timer, where you invite somebody to try in their body what it feels like to reject and accept. And I used that meditation when I was going through a bit of heart, heartbreak and loss. And it was really consciousness changing for me because what I found was when I did not, when I tried to reject, of course, I tightened up, my chest tightened up, I couldn't breathe. But when I accepted, it was like beautiful. And it was more like the feeling of love that I was feeling sad about you know, losing a particular individual than, it, than anything. And it was a huge insight. And I just wanted to commend that to others. And because uh, I was thinking about it as you were speaking earlier. But I think it was Insight Timer, but it was a wonderful meditation. Wonderful. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Bob. Um, I think it is on Insight Timer. Yeah. I think it may be called The Power of Yes. Um, yes. Like that. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. The power of yes, yeah. The power of the power of yes, as opposed to the power of maybe, or the power of no. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've uh, you know I I think I've heard it first um, probably from Tara Brock when she led one, and I thought it, I found it as like you, Bob. I found it really powerful, just a, a palpable shift in energetically in the body and in the spirit and in the heart in in making that change and it doesn't always happen like everything you know there'll be times where we might be just so closed that you know rather than say yes we give it the proverbial you know what um rejecting it and um so you know not expecting anything to be uh you know 
panacea in all, all times. But when we do open our heart, you know, and we do allow ourselves to to open, then yeah, very, very, very powerful changes can can happen. Thanks for sharing that, Bob. Let's see, is there anyone in the uh, raising their hands or uh, <clears throat> in person or in the chat. Adriana has her hand up. Please go ahead. Hi, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to share, I had this insight today as Hugh was talking. And again, thank you so much for this wonderful talk. It's so good to have this reinforcement and remember what keeps us you know, in, in prison constrained and what frees us. And I was thinking that when you're resisting, and you're putting all this energy into your sometimes anger and resistance, it seems like your cognitive function in the brain that would allow for the creativity and the space that you need in order to make lasting change is impaired because your energy, almost from a medical standpoint, you know, your brain cannot be angry and constrained and struggling at the same time that it is creative. So if you want to have access to that creativity in your brain that will actually allow you to uh, you know, make the path for yourself to change something you need to change in your life that you're struggling with, you really need to be calm. You really need to be in the accepting mode because then you open up all the space and all the access to the function in the brain that will allow you to actually feel better and get to where you want to be. Does that make sense? Absolutely. No, you, I, I, you couldn't have said it more clearly. I think you said it really beautifully. And I, I think it's absolutely true just from the, both from the scientific perspective of what's going on in the brain and in the nervous system, and from a kind of a direct experience, what we experience ourselves when we when we do go into those modes, one mode versus another mode, you know, the, the nature, you know, when we go into what we often talk about as fight or flight mode, you know, we're in that defended mode, we're going to, we, you know, defend ourselves or run away. When we're in that mode, um, what we get into is a kind of tunnel vision. You know, it's like somebody with a hammer, everything looks like a nail, you know, it's like we're so focused on the thing that, you know, this is a problem. It's that person doing these really bad things, you know, so every, all the energy, as you said, Adriana, go into that. And there's all of this space that we're missing out on, you know, and as you say, with the creativity, we need that space. Creativity, you know, comes really from I think a lot comes from sparking connections in different parts of the brain. And if we're in the narrow place, we're not open to those kind of sparking of, of like, oh, this and the link with that, oh, maybe that, you know, and it's a whole different thing. And that, I think you put it, I think, really, really clearly and beautifully. So um, thank you for sharing that, yeah. Um, we're at 12 and we, you know, typically we, we try and finish by 12.15. Um, so what we'll do now is um, we'll have a short final meditation, some announcements, and then, um, then we'll finish or kind of have a, the informal session uh, if people want to, to continue um, when the class is formally over. So let's just take a few moments, few minutes to finish up. Let your eyes close, let your attention come inward again. <clears throat> you might take a few deeper breaths to help you settle, relax, just arrive again, be here. It's helpful, I think, to remember some of the very simple practices that we can go to.
could say resources that we go to, to particularly when we're feeling difficulties or challenges. The deeper breath is one of them. Another is the, the smile, just inviting that expression around the eyes and the mouth and feel what that does to the body and the, the nervous system, the emotions when you invite a smile. Putting a hand on your heart, maybe on your belly, just connecting with, with yourself that gesture of caring for yourself, caring for this life can be powerful too. Taking a few minutes to reflect on gratitude can also be a kind of allow for a shift out of our focus on what's wrong or what we lack or what we need to what we already have. Appreciating all the, all the things or some of the things of the many things we have in our lives that we take for, often take for granted. Gratitude is such a gift to ourselves and to life really. really helps bring us to a state of acceptance, accepting what we have, appreciating what we have. And now just opening to what's present. with kindness, with acceptance. This short poem is by A.R. Ammons. It's called Old Geezer. The quickest way to change the world is to like it the way it is. Quickest way to change the world is to like it, like, like it the way it is. Just taking some moments to appreciate our time together. Appreciate all the ways we, We grow from community, from Sangha, how we support each other in our practice, how we wake up together. You might, just as you breathe in, wish yourself well. Breathe in kindness and compassion for yourself. Whatever that way you might say that to yourself, may I be happy, or may I be kind to myself. Wishing yourself well. Kind of a foundation for our well being and for kindness to others in the world. And as you breathe out, you might send out loving kindness to everyone who's here, all of us here together this morning. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be peaceful, healthy and well. May you live with ease and with kindness.
breathing in kindness to yourself and breathing out care, kindness, compassion to, to the world, you know, wherever, wherever it might feel most needed right now, wherever your imagination takes you. May you be safe, happy, peaceful, healthy, well. May you live with ease and with kindness. Finishing with this short poem from Ria Khan. Don't say my heart has nothing to offer. Come and I will share with you the cool breeze that fills my window. Don't say my heart has nothing to offer. Come and I will share with you the cool breeze that fill, fills my window. So a few announcements to, <clears throat> to finish. I, I want to, um, I've mentioned this um, the last couple of weeks um, that I'm teaching a class on the Four Noble Truths starting next month, April 19th, six week class. Um, really the foundation of all of the, the, the Buddha's teachings. And um, I'm putting in the uh, in the chat the uh, the link to that. Um, I'm really looking forward to teaching it, and I'm planning on teaching other courses coming up on the four no on the eightfold path and on the foundations of mindfulness. But uh, if you'd like to um, uh, join us for that, if you have any questions, let me know. My